Gabby and Olivia are going to do accolading today. Okay, yeah, yeah. But if you want to help with communion, that'd be good. Because yeah, we'll have communion. Thank you. Are you on? Okay.
Marilyn, is that my cue? Is that my cue? No, I think we're ready. Are we ready? Or did you have something to play? No, I'm creating them now. What? No, we're not greeting today. No, is it good? Is that what you're, you ready? All right. Good morning. Welcome to United in Christ. My name is Michelle Shear, and I am a congregational member just like you are. Um, and I've been given an extraordinary opportunity today to lead us in worship. So I would say a little over a year ago, I felt called uh, by God and the Holy Spirit uh, to partake in the Authorized Lay Worship Leader Program. And so over the last year, I've been able to take different courses and to learn more about the Bible and Luther and just about ministry in general. And so I have another year yet to go. And so um, I'm just trying to practice a little bit, I guess I would say. So practice a little bit today. So again, thank you for coming today. We appreciate you being here. Uh, I just want to start with a couple of announcements. The social ministry team will be meeting today after worship around 11.30 down in um, the fellowship hall. For anybody who's interested in coming uh, to learn more about it, anybody's welcome to come to that uh, committee meeting at any time. Also, today is kind of a busy day because today is the Crosscutters game. So if you ordered tickets, your tickets should be down in your mailboxes. Uh, it will start uh, today at 4 o'clock. And so, again, uh, we hope to see you there. There's still tickets available, so if you didn't already get a ticket, you can purchase tickets there, and they're not very expensive. They're 10 or under to be able to do so. Also, just a heads up, on Mondays and Thursdays at 6 p.m., we have a new walking group that's uh, meeting at the West Milton or the Milton State Park. So anybody who's interested any Monday or Thursday, if you feel inclined to do so, you just meet at 6 o'clock there, I think probably by the bathrooms, and then go on a walk. This week we have Oaks, and that will be at uh, 10 a.m. on Tuesday. So again, anybody who feels like kicking it up a little bit and coming to Oaks is welcome to attend. Finance team meeting will be uh, this Wednesday at 6.30. Uh, just a reminder that our Communion Day event will take place this Thursday, starting at 10 a.m. So if there are students that are looking to go through the process of First Communion, all you have to do is just learn more about that by coming to that event. And again, it will be a full day and it ends with supper for the families here at the building around 5.30. Also, our next Theology on Tap is going to be this Friday at uh, the Three Beards Brewing in Sunbury. It's that Theology on Tap field trip. Uh, so again, folks can, who want a carpool can just meet here at the building at 5 p.m. or you can just meet there if you want to as well. And then uh, we also are collecting backpacks and school supplies for the children at Milton Area School District. So if you still want to contribute, you can do so. We will be doing the blessing of the backpacks and all of that uh, school supplies next Sunday. So mark your calendars, kids, students, uh, teachers. We're going to do our annual backpack blessing next Sunday at church. And so be sure to be here with your backpacks, briefcases, and bags. And that's all I have for announcements. Does anyone else have any announcements? All right, so if not, I just ask you to center your hearts and minds for worship during the prelude.
ask you to rise if you're able for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now join in our opening hymn, number 807, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you.
Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food, fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading for today is taken from the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. He has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You shall read the psalm responsibly by full verse. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. The Lord upholds all who are falling, and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in dispute. You open your hand satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now, when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured the, the sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. 
And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'd like to invite any of the young people here present in worship at the playground for our children's sermon. Welcome, welcome. So, I have a question for you. Do you know what the word compassion means? No. No? Anybody have an idea of what compassion means? Have you heard of it before? Yeah. Heard of it before? Yeah? Addy? Um, like you give somebody Yeah, compassion. If you want to look at the word compassion in terms of what you're doing, that's exactly right. Giving some people some food, right? When we talk about compassion, we talk about being caring and being nice and and helping others. So exactly, Addie, that's what we're talking about. So today, in the gospel reading that I just read, there's this word compassion. And in Matthew's story about Jesus, Matthew says that, Jesus had compassion on the crowd. So, you know, uh, what had happened before this story was that Jesus found out that his one good friend, one of his good friends, John the Baptist, had been killed. And he was really, really sad. And he just wanted to be alone. Have you ever felt that way, that you were sad and you just want to be by yourself? Have you ever felt that way? Well, Jesus felt that way. He was really sad. And he wanted to be by himself. And so, um, you know, he, he did that. But what happened was 5,000, more than 5,000 people followed him. So they followed him. Jesus, ended, he was in the desert, like really hot desert. And they followed him to the desert. And the disciples, they said, oh, just, just let, the, let the, them go into town and get something to eat. But Jesus, Jesus had compassion on him. And like Addy said, his way to show compassion was to feed them. And so he said to the disciples, we're going to feed them. So I brought like a little illustration here. This is what the disciples brought back. So this is what they brought back. There's five loaves and two fishes. So what do you think? Do you think this is enough to feed the over 5,000? No, I don't even know if we could, it would feed all of us, right? You know, that's not a whole lot of food. But what happened was the disciples did what Jesus said and brought it to Jesus. And then in the reading, it says, Jesus, he looked to heaven, he blessed it, and he broke it. And you know what? There was enough food for everybody to eat. And they even had seven, yeah, seven. They even had 12 baskets left over. How cool is that? Do you think that that makes sense? What do you think? Addie? How'd they do that? How'd they take, how did Jesus take five loaves and two fishes to make that much food, to even have 12 baskets left? What do you think? Um, because there's not enough. Well there, them. well, there was, though. Jesus had, they had more than enough. They even had 12 baskets full. How could he do that? How could Jesus? How could Jesus do that? What do you think? Yeah, me. Absolutely, Jesus blessed it. Right, he looked to the heaven and he blessed it, and he was able to have more than enough for all of them. So again, how how neat is that? That Jesus is able to provide more than enough for all of us. So, I want you to remember something. The next time you eat some bread. Some of you will have communion, so you'll have some bread today. Or if you eat bread in a sandwich or you eat some fish, I want you to remember that God's love, God is love. And what God and Jesus are asking is for us to be able 
we have enough <clears throat> excuse me, to be able to feed everyone by doing things good and doing good. And if we follow Jesus just like the disciples did, we'll have more than enough. So there's a few things that we need to do. What are those? What do we do? Yeah. Put our hands in the water. Pastor Justin, put new water up. Addy? You can get books, right? There's plenty of books here. Emmy, what were you going to say? <laughs> yep, get candy, candle, pray, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do all those things. So first thing, let's bow our heads and let's fold our hands. That helps us concentrate. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, even though you were sad that day, you had compassion on the hungry crowd of over 5,000 people in the desert. In your compassion, you were able to take five loaves of bread and two fish from the disciples and create a bounty of enough for all with leftovers to boot. Help us to remember that when we work together and follow you like the disciples did, we will have more than enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's get your stuff here. And so we have coloring sheets too. And the coloring sheet, good, you can take that back and use that. This is a picture of Jesus with a, a little child with a, the bread and the fish. So again, you can color that. There's crayons there. Here, I'll give you one of these. You want one of those? Take some lollipops with you. You know, Kendall, you and Madeline match, I think. Do you see that? Look, you have that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Help yourself. And then there's crayons there, so take your crayons. Yeah, take crayons. You can go back to your seat or stay up at the playground. That's up to you. I like your hair, Kendall. I love this. That's new. Everybody got it? Okay. Oh, that's nice. We need some help. <laughs> I married a fisherman. Well, Steve is a lot of things. One thing is for sure, he is a fisherman. In fact, last weekend he went with his friends and his brother to Lake Erie on a charter fishing trip for walleye. Locally, Steve has fished probably every stream from Williamsport to New Berlin, from Arby Winter to Danville, catching a lot of trout over the years. With his dad's boat, he's been able to catch catfish in the Susquehanna River in Milton and crappies in Tioga Hammond near Mansfield. When we visited friends in Myrtle Beach, he even went on a fishing trip with them. Now, to be fair, I knew this about Steve before I married him 26 years ago. Steve was an avid trout fisherman then. And so I went out with him and tried to learn to fish. Well, I quickly found out I'm not good at fishing in creeks and streams. My hook either ended up getting stuck in the rocks in the bottom of the creek or in the nearest tree when I tried to cast out. Also, I can't swim, and so deep lakes scare me. Over the years, I've just left catching fish to Steve, as well as filleting them too. Uh, Steve has a good time with it, and eating fish without bones is so much more enjoyable for our family. But in all of our years together, in his years of fishing, I don't think he's ever brought two, only two fish home with him. With only two fillets per fish, Steve, Dalton, Larissa, and I, we couldn't make a meal out of just four small fish fillets. And here in this story, we read about the disciples trying to feed over 5,000 people with just two fish. Even if Steve caught the daily limit of 50 crappies, that would not have been enough to feed this mass of people. But what's enough? 
Today's gospel reading for Matthew is the only miracle story told in all four gospels. It starts at a time when Jesus and the disciples just wanted to be alone. Before this passage, Jesus learns that his good friend, John the Baptist, is killed. He and the disciples decide to go into the desert to be alone and pray. It's understandable inclination that they want to be to get away a little bit after such a loss. However, a crowd of 5,000 men and numerous other women and children follow them into the desert. So much for trying to get some time to clear their heads. Nevertheless, Jesus looks on the crowd with compassion, and he goes about working among the crowds, healing the sick in their midst. After a day of such work, as evening falls, the disciples go to Jesus and tell him they want to let the crowd go into the town and buy their own food for themselves. The disciples just want to get rid of these people, but Jesus will have none of that. Jesus sets aside his sadness, and he keeps his compassion on the people. They have not eaten, and Jesus instructs the disciples to gather food to feed the crowd. The disciples come back with two fish and five loaves. Hardly enough to feed five people, let alone 5,000 people. Jesus takes the fish and the bread. He lifts it to heaven, he blesses it, he breaks the bread, and he gives it back to the disciples to feed the crowd of the people. This meager amount of food in the hands of Jesus becomes bountiful enough to provide for all the people present. They even had baskets of food remaining. In this gospel reading, there's no sermon or parable, nothing to try to puzzle out or understand Jesus' words. It's a story full of activity. From Jesus and the disciples going to the desert, to the disciples getting the food, to Jesus blessing it, to the disciples distributing it to the crowds, there's a fury of action in this story. But it's interesting to see who is actually doing the acting. Matthew's telling of the story shows that Jesus did not feed the crowd. The disciples fed the crowd. The disciples were instructed by Jesus to gather the food and then hand it out to the people. As Jesus creates space for this miraculous feeding, the disciples are called into the work as partners in what God is doing. The disciples are made co-workers of God's kingdom, conveyors of the miraculous for the sake of the people around them. Similarly, their activity gives way to a call of action from Jesus to us as freed Christians. We have a responsibility entrusted to us from God to work for good in the world. We are called to be part of this process of compassion and abundance. We are called to be co-workers in God's kingdom. How do we enact such miraculous abundance? We might get a glimpse of this from our other lesson of the day. In our first reading today from Isaiah 55, Bob read, Ho, everyone who thirst, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Later it says, listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food food. This chapter of Isaiah was the last in a group called the Book of Consolations. These chapters were developed in the midst and in the time of the Israelite exile. These words from Isaiah 55 would have been important in showing the Israelites that God had not abandoned them. They were in a scarcity mindset looking for just those basic needs of food and water to be satisfied. In hearing these words, the Israelites had greater hope and more of an abundance mindset. Isaiah is giving a prophetic call to eat without cost, that there is enough. To the people, even such a standard as enough 
becomes miraculous to those left wanting in this world. Enough. So how are we using it? God is love. As freed Christians, we already have eternal life through the gift of Christ's death and resurrection. You and I have been given our share of enough. Because of this gracious gift, we get to reach out to the marginalized, the hungry, the thirsty, the imprisoned, the oppressed. Like Jesus putting bread and fish in the hands of the disciples, we are called and commissioned to be co-workers with God. We are free to work for everyone's enough in the world around us. Even in this small corner of the world, we can show concrete acts of love, compassion towards others. In doing so, we share signs of God's kingdom breaking into the world, just as it did for those hungry crowds uh, surrounding Jesus. Because, no doubt, God's kingdom is still taking root around us and with enough for all and enough to spare. When we give out packs of diapers and wipes to struggling families, it is enough. When we provide lunch, bingo, and a place for senior citizens to belong, it is enough. When we give scholarships to students planning to serve children, it is enough. When we listen to the needs of our neighbors from the Milton Developmental Services, it is enough. When we deliver food boxes to older members in our community, it is enough. When we hand out bottles of water and stickers at a local pride event, it is enough. When we open our church doors and welcome all, it is enough. God's kingdom is still breaking into this world, and we are called to be part of that process. When we work together and we follow Jesus as the disciples did, we can dream big and have a lasting impact. Two fish and five loaves are enough. That's the good news to, for us to remember. That's really worth clinging to. That is enough. Thanks be to God. If you want to rise, we will sing our hymn of the day. Break thou the bread of life on page nine in our bulletins.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. You gather your church together by the Holy Spirit. Inspire all the baptized to proclaim your abundant love throughout the world. Guide us in the mission of the gospel through word and deed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You cherish your creation from the smallest microbe to the largest mountain. Protect fragile ecosystems, send favorable weather, supply food and water to nourish creatures, and raise, up, raise us up to care for all that you have created. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You desire peace and justice in the world. Instill within all political leaders your desire. Support the work of international peace organizations and provide relief for those in war-torn areas. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You comfort those who are hurting, accompany those who are alone, heal those who are sick, provide for all who hunger or thirst, console the bereaved, bring joy to the sorrowful, and attend to all who call on you, especially those that we name aloud or in our hearts. Betsy Thomas, Jean Campbell, Ken Kearney, Earl Butch Tyson, Judy Rischel, Russ Wynn, Rosemary Finster, Ryan Hunter, Annette Baker, Mark Raybuck, Shirley Russell, Bob Kiefer, Martha Ketchum, Peg Swinehart, Marie Tanner, Viv Marsh. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You place us within communities for mutual support and love. Reveal yourself to us in worship, fellowship, and ministry with our neighbors. Provide for feeding ministries and food banks in our area that we share your abundance with all who hunger. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. You have placed before us examples of faithful living who have witnessed to your promises throughout time and space. Rouse us by their lives of service and dedication to be your hands and feet in this world. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace be with you, Em. Thank you so much. Peace be with you, Tom. Thank you. Peace be with you, Marilyn. Oh, thanks, thanks. It was an easy one to do. Oh, you can use that again for Yes. Peace be with you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah. Peace, Peace, be Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Annie. Peace be with you, Kathy. Peace. Peace be with you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Peace be with you. Good job. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Mary Peace be with you, Mom. Peace be with you. Thanks for coming. Peace be with you.
you did more than enough. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thumbs up. Thank you very much. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. At this time, we will prepare for offering. Just a reminder that as the offering plates come around, you're welcome to distribute what tithe you have. Also, uh, there's a QR code for Tithely if you want to do that. And then you can just put, there's an insert on the offering plate. Um, you can put that in as well. Whatever your gifts are, we welcome any of those. So we'll, we'll do offering now. rise as you're able. pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us through the gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and our duty and our joy 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come and eat what is good. Thanks be to God. Given for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The body of 
Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Christ given for you.
Please rise. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Hearts and voices raised, tell everyone what God has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and bear Christ's holy name. Send us with your promises, O God, and lead us forth in joy with shouts of Let us pray. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Now the God who crawls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. We join together in our sending hymn number 658. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Thanks again, Tom. I should have said sit. I should have introduced you and I didn't. I feel bad about that. I think. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go right in.